Thank you, Lois. Our next reader from Prescott, Arizona is Jeff Fernside, and he's going to read an excerpt from his first prize short story. Very interesting title. A husband and wife are one Satan. Where did Mary go? Oh, hi, Mary. Yeah, well, thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Penn Knob and especially you for sponsoring and judging it. Um, I had to laugh when you made your presentation. I do live in Arizona now, but I did live in Kazakhstan for four years. So um, this story is uh, pretty much was uh, born out of a phrase in Russian. It's called a mush. Ijana Adna Satana, which means a husband and wife are one Satan. And so that's the title of the story. And I'll just read the opening section. Neither of them could remember exactly when their arguments began bringing more business to their cafe. A certain amount of public obnoxiousness could always be expected in Kazakhstan, especially when vodka was involved, but normally the deeply personal affairs of a husband and wife were kept secret behind the locked doors of crumbling Soviet-era apartments or closed gates of tiny village homes. That doesn't mean people were above prying into their neighbors' lives, especially in the villages. Raim and Raelia made it easy for them. It started out playfully. Mayor, Raim would say, smacking his wife on her great round behind, which shivered like a horse's flank under her cotton skirt. Stallion, she would return, grabbing him by his fleshy hips and then pushing him away, laughing. The sparse few customers who came at first, mostly their friends and relatives, enjoyed this little theater. Then one day, Raim returned drunk from a trip to the bazaar to buy onions and Raelia uh, soundly scolded him for coming in on his eyebrows in front of the entire cafe. You're really under her heel, roared the big foundry boss, Kolya, and everybody laughed. Raim, normally good-natured and too drunk to fight back anyway, grinned sheepishly. But it's a very pretty heel, he said, trying to wink but blinking both eyes instead. Once the taboo had, was, had been broken, they began arguing as freely in their cafe as they did at home. Being ethnic Tatars, descendants from the Mongols who had ravaged the region some 800 years before, they already enjoyed a certain reputation for wildness. At some point, they realized that business had become brisk. Just how much was due to their tasty home-style cooking and how much to the entertainment was uncertain, but Raelia shrewdly observed that there were certain phrases that always pleased her diners, who even insisted that the thunderous pop music, normally a cafe's main attraction, be turned down in order to hear what the combatants were saying. <laughs> it was a summer Friday night, and the regulars were all there, married, bear-like Kolya and his doll-like girlfriend, Larissa, Murat, a quiet little Kazakh man, and Tikhan, the equally quiet Russian youth who always sat with him. Dilya and Olya, excitable and extravagant teenage friends, and Ali Khan, a widower everyone assumed was alcoholic because he strangely sat by himself and never spoke except to order. Raim bustled between his roles of greeting customers, grilling large skewers of meat and dishing out portions from a massive cauldron of plov, long boiled rice, carrots, and onions topped with mutton. Assalamu alaikum, he greeted Murat as he did all his fellow Muslims. Peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam, Murat returned. They gripped hands lightly but warmly, their free hands holding each other's forearms to show respect. Since Kolya was Christian, Raim greeted him in Russian and shook his hand in the vigorous Western style. In such a way, Raim visited each table to ensure that his customers were happy. They all settled into their seats while Raelia topped off everyone's glasses with their drinks of choice. Then the show began. And if you want to read the rest, this is in the <laughs> latest issue of the Potomac Review.